And this is your Coalition Radio Network General Manager, Pat Ford. We're here at Brood Awakenings, 100 Westminster Street, scenic downtown La Prov Providence, the Renaissance City, the Naked City, the city of, well, probably a few hundred thousand stories. Just wrapping up is a fundraiser for Coalition Radio Network star, Chaz Kalenda. Of course, this is Wednesday nights, and normally you'd be seeing Chaz Kalenda, attorney of law. What you're seeing right now is Chaz Kalenda, attorney and candidate to be the attorney general of the state of Rhode Island. Uh, Chaz, how did it go tonight? I had a great time tonight. I met a lot of great people tonight from across the state, and I couldn't have asked for a better reception. I really appreciate the fact that people support my message of putting the law above politics in the attorney general's office and support the platform of me being that person to affect that change. I think what was particularly stunning about tonight's event, and I joined it late, was the diversity of the folks here. You had lifelong attorneys, if you will. You had business owners, restaurant owners. You had folks from the community and community organizations. Every imaginable person, personality here to support what they see ultimately is much needed change from their perspective. I'm here to report on it. Uh, if you could isolate perhaps a one frustration of theirs with the criminal justice system in Rhode Island, or perhaps one thing they're particularly disappointed in, what do you think it would be? The fact that the attorney general who currently is occupying that office is not fighting for them, who's not responsive to their needs, who's more interested in putting a partisan agenda above the rule of law. That's what they've seemed to be the common, that's what seemed to be the common theme, Pat, uh, amongst the people who were attending here tonight. They wanted to see somebody who could be an independent check and balance upon the government here in Rhode Island and fighting for the rights of Rhode Islanders based upon the rule of law and not a partisan agenda. And I think that's something that uh, my message has always been. I've been very consistent on that point. And people seem to have taken a, a, a a liking to that, saying that we need somebody who's going to be that independent check and balance on the rest of Rhode Island. Now, for people who may come across this show tonight for the first time, maybe you can sort of introduce yourself as a candidate and tell folks, a, give, them a, give them a sort of a snapshot of your background. So, Pat, I've been an attorney for 15 years. I was a special assistant attorney general in the Rhode Island attorney general's office for my first 12 years of my career. Uh, the last almost four years, I've been practicing at the law firm of Inman and Torgy in Coventry, Rhode Island, uh, handling a wide variety of cases in criminal defense, civil litigation, administrative law, family law, what have you. And that's what I've been doing. I've been uh, especially vocal and uh, active lately getting involved in the what I see as government overreach, uh, particularly in these mandates issues, uh, whether it be vaccines or masks, and trying to be uh, a, a voice of reason, trying to be an advocate for people who have had their choice uh, taken away from them in these particular areas. So that's what I've been doing with my career, and that's why I believe I'm the best suited candidate to be Rhode Island's next attorney general. Now, what, what, what I find fascinating about your career, and how we got to know each other uh, during the, uh, the now infamous gymnasium case, where you represented a Connecticut-based but Rhode Island uh, cited Jim Chain, and that owner had decided he'd had enough. And this is going back a long time ago, so I can only imagine how he feels right now. But uh, he'd had enough and decided to stay open despite the state mandates. And, and that's become one of your, your the signature elements of, of your career. But you talk about the wide breadth of law that you, in terms of the types of cases you both tried, both as a prosecutor and as someone who defend the defense, you know, as a defense attorney, but also, if you could, sort of give folks a feel for that slice of Rhode Island life that you've seen firsthand and the kind of empathy that gives you for your fellow Rhode Islanders. Well, Pat, I've done a lot of my trying of cases in the criminal justice system. I've done an uh, innumerable amount of cases as a prosecutor in the attorney general's office. And I've had there certainly had my fair share of cases in the four, almost four years I've been doing in the criminal defense side. And I've had the opportunity to have my eyes opened on, you know, not only as a prosecutor, but as a defense attorney, uh, seeing not only the government's ability to affect people's lives in such a profound way, 
but the way that that power has been used by the current attorney general's office. And, it, and it's not certainly not limited to this current attorney general. It's gone back decades uh, as far as how they wield that power, the immense power of that office. Uh, I'm looking for rule of law and consistency. I'm looking for an attorney general who is going to do what's right all the time. I'm looking to be that attorney general who's going to do what's right by the law all the time and not do what maybe poll testing tells them is the right thing to do and what politics tells them what to do, but somebody who's going to fight for the rule of law and to put law above politics. That's what I've come across uh, through the, the people I've come across uh, throughout my campaign here, throughout my time as a lawyer, somebody who's looking for an advocate for all Rhode Islanders, somebody who's going to put the Rhode Islanders' best interests above their partisan political ambitions. That's been my mantra the entire time. That's something that I will take with me if I am elected to be the Attorney General of the state of Rhode Island, put my partisan politics aside and do what's right by all Rhode Islanders if I'm elected to that office. Yeah, there, there's two slices of life, if you within the office of the attorney general. Uh, and what folks see most often are, are the front facing people in terms of the, uh, the interrelationship with the executive branch. But in reality, there's also a significant investment in professional staff. Um, again, career prosecutors, uh, support into people, uh, paralegals, investigative services, and the institutional knowledge that those individuals have. And as well, I also want to mix in the empathy. I, it's, 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 if I picked up one signal today, it's that your ability to understand the plight of the common man or woman, if you will, uh, who gets sort of caught up in the system uh, as opposite. Speak to the importance of the professional staff here at the Office of the Attorney Generals, because that's an, that's an element I don't know that most Rhode Islanders ever see. How important is that? And what role do they play? The, the, the lifelong prosecutors or the, the frontline staff at the attorney general's office are the face of that office. They are the ones that you're going to be, uh, the ordinary citizens of Rhode Island are going to be interacting with on a daily basis. And they're the ones who make that impression on you when you have the unfortunate opportunity to be in, either in front of the criminal justice system or facing some sort of civil action that is being prosecuted uh, by the attorney general's office. Uh, these are people that uh, basically set the tone for how people view the government of Rhode Island. And I will say, having worked with many of them over the last uh, the first 12 years of my career, I should say, most of them are exceptionally professional and do a great job of, of doing what the mission of that office is, which is to put the rule of law above politics. However, in recent years, that has not been the case uh, as far as the top-down administration uh, from the office. They have made it their job to make it so that it looks like the attorney general is basically the government's private attorney. That is not how it should be. The, the attorney general is an independently elected constitutional officer of the state of Rhode Island. And that person should not only be enforcing the rule of law, they should be fighting for the people of Rhode Island. And that's what people have said to me that they're missing so much. And I think that that's what they're attracted to about my campaign is that I'm listening to them. I'm listening to their concerns and I'm hearing their concerns that they don't have an advocate right now. They have, they see a governor who is perhaps overreaching with their executive authority. They see a general assembly that's not taking any action to rein in that authority. They're looking to the attorney general to say, you're the chief law enforcement officer of the state. What are you doing to help me in my daily life and protect me from this overreach and they're not getting any response so you have many professional people in that office who are doing their jobs and doing it well but you have the uh, the attorney general himself and his political staff which are unfortunately creating the public perception and probably a very real perception that that office is there to protect the government of the state of Rhode Island as opposed to its people and that to me is just a, a, a terrible perception to have coming out of that office. You're, if you're facing the beginning now of, of the real campaign season, as, as someone who doesn't get a chance to go to a lot of these events anymore, a political now, I, I found it fascinating that people were approaching you with the idea of fundraisers. And, you know, we have, we have a couple of rules to coalition. One of the most important ones is how we treat candidates. Uh, 
as we like to say, we're not interested in your fundraising. We're not interested in your polling. Uh, we're not interested if you're going to win. What we want to know is why you should. And so typically I, I step aside from, you know, the sort of uh, handicapping experience that the media is, is obsessed with. And I, it, but today it just kind of hit me over the head because literally there were groups of people volunteering to raise money for you. That's not something I see a lot in the body politic. It's not something I've ever experienced in my life because it's not something that I've ever uh, desired to do in my life leading up to my run and my official announcement for candidacy to attorney general. So it, it struck me as, as awe-inspiring. It struck me as almost humbling, Pat, uh, that to have so many people offer to try to get me elected to this office, not because they necessarily agree with what my personal views are, but they agree with my message that they need an advocate in the attorney general's office who's going to fight for ordinary people and not just simply be a rubber stamp for government overreach. And that's exactly the message that they took from this that I, that I can tell and that I have been trying to get out there, uh, that, that these people have been so moved that they are offering in any way, shape or form to try to raise money for me, try to raise awareness, try to get my name out there in any way they possibly can, in any little way they possibly can. That means more to me than any amount of dollar amounts that I could possibly raise or ask anybody to donate to me. Uh, it's the it's the people who actually believe in my message, believe in my uh, in me as a person, uh, in my in my honesty and my authenticity to run that office of attorney general, which is an, an incredibly important office that that was humbling. It's inspiring. It's the reason I'm doing this, because uh, I, I can sit here as, a, as an attorney and complain about my interactions with the attorney general's office day in and day out. But if I'm not willing to do something about it and if I'm not willing to ask people to help me do something about it, then I really have no place to complain, unlike a lot of people who do a lot of complaining and, and don't want to do anything about it. I want to do something about it, and I am really thankful to those people who showed up here tonight and offered their assistance in any way they possibly could. That, to me, was the best part of my night. Are you going to spend a, a significant part of your term as Attorney General involved in legislating, or do you find the true purpose of the office of the attorney general to be elsewhere. There is no role for me to be legislating in the office of the attorney general. And it's simple separation of powers. The legislating gets done by the general assembly and the governor. The enforcement of those laws gets done by the attorney general. Are there going to be areas where I may say to the legislature, this will help me do my job. So I would appreciate it if you look at this. Yeah, there may be some areas, but actually, the only real area that I really have an interest in working with the legislature on uh, as far as advocate advocacy as to what the laws should be are laws to make the politics stay away from my office. And right now, that's just not the case in the attorney general's office, because every decision that's being made in there is being made through a political lens, because everybody who works in that office serves at the pleasure of the attorney general. So if the attorney general does not like what they do. He doesn't have any, need any reason to fire those people. He can get rid of them the next day. I may be looking for that, uh, for the General Assembly to help me in that respect, to give the people who have worked their entire lives in that office and uh, under, using good service in that office to have some freedom and availability to make independent law-based decisions without fear of political retribution. Do you prefer in your own personal style to micromanage, or do you think it's important to empower people to be successful? I am not a micromanager, and I, I think that was one of my biggest complaints with the attorney general's office when I worked there for the 12 years. Uh, if you're going to hire people to work for you, I would hope that you trust their judgment, and particularly attorneys' judgments who are, who are wielding the power of a prosecutor. You have to be able to trust their judgments to make good calls all the time. And if you don't, they shouldn't be working for you. So I want to have a staff that is, I can trust 100% to make decisions that I know are going to be in the best interest of the people, that are going to be consistent with the law, and they're going to be devoid of political considerations. Excellent. Well, Chaz, again, um, as someone who's sort of observing the events tonight, uh, congratulations on the turnout. Uh, congratulations on the message. It, it, the work really begins now, right? It's the, Absolutely. The, the, the battle has been joined. Uh, I get the sense that you're you're ready, willing, and able. Tan, rested, and ready, as they say, right? Absolutely. I am ready, willing, and able. And I hope that everyone will give me the opportunity to show that I am going to be the best candidate to be the next attorney general. Do you anticipate 
final thought here. You anticipate covering most of the state during the campaign. Are you going to reach out to communities that may right now feel that law enforcement and the criminal justice system has left them behind? Absolutely. I'm going to be an attorney general for all Rhode Islanders throughout all geographic areas of the state, no matter what your political background is, no matter what your background in, in general is. Uh, it, and I think that's something that is uh, sorely missing right now. We have an attorney general who's representing only the politics backgrounds that he finds to be acceptable. I'm not going to be like that. Whether you support me or don't support me, if I'm elected, you can count on me to be your advocate as a Rhode Islander because that's what's more important to me than anything else, more important than my own political, any political ambitions I may have or any future in politics that I may have. I'm more, I'm more interested in being your advocate and being an attorney general for everyone here in Rhode Island. Well, this was just sort of a snapshot show tonight. Cash Calende, attorney at law, returns next week, Wednesdays at 8.15, uh, usual format. But uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to meet Chas out on the road and sort of get a sense of, of what direction he was taking the campaign. Folks, uh, we're going to be on in a little while. Uh, Eyes on Pawtucket folks are going to be joining us for a show tonight. We are the Coalition Radio Network. Again, tonight, Chas Glenda, attorney at law, facebook.com slash the Coalition Radio on the Mighty Mighty Twitter at Coalition underscore radio, and of course at coalitionradionetwork.com. You're going to be seeing more of us, if you will, from engaging a little bit of shameless self-promotion over the coming weeks. We've added on two new shows, potentially one more to come, and we believe sincerely that whether it be Chas Kalinda, Attorney at Law, Ramp, Real Access, Motivates Progress, The Golf Dudes, one of our newer shows, Meg, and and. and and, I, and her focus on dining and, if you will, food, joined in with the Coalition Radio Network flagship show. And, of course, all the coverage you see during the day, you know, we're the folks who still go to the press conferences wherever they might be. But we hope you'll like us, share us, and, 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 and come along with us for, I believe, the finest media, the finest television, the finest source of community information, the finest source of fun that you're going to see in any other Rhode Island production. Stay tuned. There's a lot more to come. Have a great night.